hello good evening you're welcome to online healing crusade it's another time to be in the presence of god to receive from him hallelujah the minister is reverend god sent him with the healing anointing to his world to preach the gospel of our lord jesus christ and he's been doing it from place to place and then god told him to take it online that's why we are online here and uh, since we started Going to a year ago now, the Lord has been touching lives, and I believe tonight it's going to be another night that God will touch you. Indeed, you are in a crusade. God anointed the servant to preach the gospel of total liberation of our Lord Jesus Christ. And just see back, God has brought you. It's not by accident. That means God has something for you. Do you have any ailments? Do you have any illness? Do you have anybody sick around you? Do you have anything troubling you? God is coming your way tonight. The anointing is available. And the word of the Lord is available. He said in his word. He said he sent his word. And his word, he led them. Just listen to the word of God. He said they came to Jesus to hear and be healed. When you hear, you'll be healed. When you hear the word, as the word of the Lord will be coming to you tonight. Just hear. Don't let anything distract you. Focus on this. Pay attention to that word. That word, there's something in that word of God. When it is sent, it will perform what God wants it to perform, where it is sent. And I know God is sending his word to you. And when he's sending his word to you, that word has a quantum energy in itself. When it gets to you and you hear it, you listen, you hear it enters into you, that word has the power to effect exactly what it is sent to do, where it is sent to do. That's the word of the Lord. And God does not tell lies. Let everybody be liar. God does not tell a lie. The word of God is powerful. Just wait, sit back and listen to this word. The word of the Lord is efficient, is powerful and it's coming your way tonight powerfully in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Join me to welcome the servants of the Lord, Evangelist Louis Olufem Yugunari. God bless you and stay connected. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank God for the opportunity to bring the word of life to you today. It's always our joy to bring the word of God to you, wherever you are listening from. Uh, today I want to minister to you from Luke chapter 13, from verse 11 through to 17. Luke 13, from verse 11 through to 17. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity, 18 years, and was bowed together, and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him, and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thy infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. And the ruler of the synagogue answered uh, with indignation, because that Jesus has healed on the Sabbath day, and said unto the people, There are six days in which men ought to walk, in them therefore come and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. The Lord then answered and said, and said He answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, doth not each or one of you on the Sabbath lose his ox or his ass from the store and lead him away to water? And ought not this woman, being the daughter of Abraham, whom Satan had bound, lo, these eighteen years be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? And when he had said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed, and all the people rejoiced. For all the glorious things that were done by him. Praise God. Now, I, I want to share with you from this passage today. And there are a lot of things that um, we can get from here. Like what I've been telling you, the word of God is the instrument of God to reach us. The Bible says he sent forth his word and the word healed them and delivered them from all their oppressions. So the word of God is the only way by which God can reach us. And the word of God is loaded. It has the power of God. The word of God in the mouth of God and the word of God in our mouth as we preach the word of God to you. That word in our mouth is as powerful as the word of God in the mouth of, the, of God himself. Because he had written it and uh, he has spoken it. And the word of God has been tested several times. And has been found to be perfect. Just like when you manufacture a vehicle, you test the vehicle to see how good it is. And when you are sure 
of the ability of that vehicle to perform according to standard, that's when you release it out. The word of God has been tested to be able to perform according to standard before it is released out. So I believe very seriously that the word of God is meant for you and it has the power to be able to heal, deliver, uh, and bring you the miracle you need or whatever um, answer to prayer you want the word of God to do for you. The word has enough power to do that. Let's go a little further. The Bible says uh, from that Luke chapter 13, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years. There is something about that. 18 years spirit of infirmity has been troubling this one. And the effect of that spirit of infirmity on her body structure is that she was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. She was in a condition that is like somebody having a hunchback or somebody having a burden placed on the back. I see you bend your back, let me put something there, and you keep carrying what I put there all around. Something like that. And uh, this woman, for many years, for 18 years, she's been bending double like that. Her back could not straight up. She couldn't stand straight like every other person. Because of the effect of that um, infirmity on the bone structure of the body, especially the backbone. Naturally, medicine can call that arthritis. They may have different names. They're going to call it. But now when we are copying Jesus Christ, we are not copying doctors. When we are following after Jesus, we are not following after doctors. When Jesus Christ says that um, the work that I do, you shall do also. We are studying his work to know how he did the works he did and know how we are going to be able to do the same work that he has sent us to do in his name. Are you getting what I'm saying? So I'm not going to call it arthritis because Jesus didn't call it that. Jesus Christ said, this woman who has been bound with this infirmity, bound by Satan, he didn't even say by evil spirit, he mentioned the name of the head of all evil spirits, Satan, said, uh, that's written in um, verse 16, said, ought not this woman being the daughter of Abraham, whom Satan had bound, Lo, behold, these 18 years be loose from this bound on the Sabbath day. So if they have not asked that question, we would not have known that the spirit of infirmity that is responsible for this woman's case is actually Satan himself, not any other one. And what is affecting her is that bondage from the devil. So that means something in her spirit man has been bound like you tie something so what should be straightened up has been bound there's a way you can take fish and then you bend it and the last part around the mouth and around the tail you join it together so it remains bound like that. It remains in that circular shape. We do that to fishes and then we dry them and we sell it as dried fish. So you could smoke them and then sell them as smoked fish. But you don't allow it to remain straight. You curve it together such that the tail and the mouth are now closed and then you find something to tie that to both tail and mouth together. So in that case, you know that that is not the shape of that um, fish. Originally, the fish is supposed to be straight. But because somebody had done some work on it to bend it, but you know, it may be at the time that the thing has died or whatever, but I'm just trying to tell you a bound. Somebody is bound, and that bondage has bent this backbone you get what i'm saying now so something made it to bend and that thing that made it to bend made it to remain bent there and science makes us to understand that uh, an object will remain at a state of rest or continue at a steady motion until another force comes 
okay, to either push it from where it, it stays or it's applied on it, which can change its movement. So I believe that God has the power and the anointing to ensure that whatever the devil has bound, Satan has bound, God is able to restore it. The anointing and the power of the Lord is able to restore it. So whatever the devil is trying to bind in your life, the power of God will restore it in the name of Jesus. But look at this woman, they said, this woman who uh, uh, should she not be loose from the infirmity or who had been bound for 18 years with the spirit of infirmity. So a spirit is involved. And Jesus called it a spirit of infirmity. And he said, Satan is involved in the bondage. Spirit of infirmity is involved in the bondage. So there is a lot of forces, superior forces and some other associated forces of the devil. They are responsible for the sickness that is affecting this person. And you know in Luke chapter 10, let me take you there, Luke chapter 10, when Jesus Christ sent the disciples out, sent the 70 of them out. Let's look at it from verse 1. After these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also, and sent them out two by two into, uh, before his face, into every city and place whither he himself would come. Therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly really is great, and the laborers are few. Pray ye the Lord of the harvest that he will send laborers, send for laborers into his harvest. Go your way, behold, I have sent you as lamb among wolves, carry neither paws, nor scrape, nor shoe, and uh, salute no man by the way. And into whatsoever house he enter, first say, Peace be unto you. And if the Son of Peace be there, your peace shall rest upon him. And he shall turn. Uh, and if not, shall turn unto you again. And in the same uh, house, remain eating and drinking such things as they gave you. Um, for the laborer is worthy of his uh, hire. Go not from house to house. And into whatever city you enter, and they receive you. Now eat such things as he said before you, and heal the sick that are therein. And say unto them, The kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. But into whatsoever city you enter, and they receive you not, go your way into the street of that same place and say every dust of your of uh, of your city which liveth unto rot we wipe against you wipe off against you not returning uh, be sure of this that the kingdom of god is come nigh unto you all right so now let's move to verse 17 and see the report of the people that were sent out and the 70 returned again with joy saying lord even the devils are subject unto us through thy name and he said unto them behold I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give power, I give unto you power to tread on serpent and scorpion, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding, it is rejoice not that the spirit are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. So I want you to see something there. He said, The spirits are subject to us when we pray in your name. What spirit is he talking about? Evil spirit like spirit of infirmity, like spirit of diseases, like spirit of sicknesses, like this spirit of bondage that bound this woman for 18 years. So spirits are subject to us that are disciples of Jesus whenever we pray in the name of Jesus and whenever we go to where he sent us because he sent them somewhere and it is when they go to where he sent them that those things were happening in their life. So when he has sent you somewhere and you pray in his name, power that he has given to you, authority that he has given unto us, give us autonomy and give us uh, audacity to be able to deal with evil spirit that is bringing sickness and disease on people. Are you getting what I'm saying? So that's very important for us to note. And here, it's not the 12. This is the 70. So some people do say that it's only the 12 that have that power and since the 12 have all died, there is no power with anybody again to do any miracle. That is not true. That is not true. The 70 also were equally anointed. And the 12, we know their names. They are all Jews. Okay? Selected by Jesus Christ after much prayer. But then, uh, we have... Um, 
and those are the ones we call our, our, our apostles of the Lamb, the one that were directly under the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ, appointed by Him to work with Him. Special are they? But then after them, what about the seventy? The seventy are not like the twelve. They are not that level of apostles. But they were first disciples. Look at where I just read to you. Okay? He appointed 70 also and sent them out two by two. So the people that he sent now are appointed by him. Are you getting what I'm saying? And he sent them out. And when he sent them out, he gave them the power and the authority to be able to deal with evil spirit. And he said, heal the sick that you find in the land where you go to preach. You understand what I'm saying? So we have that same authority and we have that same power to minister today. You understand what I'm saying? And we should be able to stand upon what Jesus Christ has done and get the same works that he has done, we should be able to do that. Not only should we be able to do them, he even gave us an extension and say, greater works than this shall you do because I have to go to the Father, but the work must continue. Are you getting me? So right now, Jesus ministered to this, uh, let's go back to our Luke chapter 13. So Jesus, Jesus ministered to this woman. Uh, verse uh, 12 says, When Jesus saw her, he called her to himself and said unto her, Woman, thou art loose from thy infirmity. Jesus saw her. How did he see her? After all, everybody that is in church, it's easy for the pastor that is standing where others are seated to be able to see them. But that's not the kind of sight we're talking about here. That is, this one is talking about, he saw her in her condition. Jesus saw the situation of the woman and in a glance could read into all that the woman has been going through for the past 18 years, briefly. And not only that, Jesus knew quite well right now under the anointing of the Holy Spirit because he's anointed for healing. So with that anointing, he's able to know how he got into that situation. That is, he knew the root cause of it. Like he spoke to the fig tree and the fig tree dried to the root. He knew that when he, he speaks the word to this woman, the word will go and arrest the spirit behind the sickness. He said, this woman who is suffering from a spirit of infirmity, this woman whom Satan has bound for 18 years, so he knows that the woman is in bondage, but the woman can be free. And the woman can only be free with the authority that God has given to the Lord Jesus Christ, with which he has given him to be able to cast out the womb, release people that are sick from their sicknesses, release those that are in bondage from their bondage, open the prison door for everybody to come out, deliver the oppressed, are you getting what I'm saying? Set and liberty them that are bruised. So those anointings are still operating with him like what he told us in Luke chapter 4, verse 18 to 20. So the same thing is happening here. He saw a woman that is in a problem, and the problem is caused by devils and demons and evil spirits and Satan. And he just told the woman, Woman, thou art loosed from thy infirmity. You are loosed. You are no more bound. And the Bible says, and he laid his hand on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. I believe that whatsoever is making you to bow down, whatsoever make you to be so ashamed, you can't lift up your head among people anymore. I believe that whatsoever the devil has done to you, I don't know what he has done, but I know what Jesus is going to do today. But whatever he has done that has made you to be downcasted, whatever make you not to be able to look up and even see your friends in the face anymore, whatever bow down your head and bow down your, you know, there is no dignity in you anymore. There is nothing to say that I'm a woman of substance. You don't have that confidence to talk anymore because of the things that the devil has made to happen in your life. Maybe you have been assaulted. Maybe you have been afflicted. Maybe you have been abused. Are you getting what I'm saying? Are you going through sexual abuse? Are you going through mental abuse? Are you going through social abuse? What is it that the devil has done to you? What messed your life up so badly like that? That you do not walk with confidence among people anymore? Have you been living your life based on negative things that the devil has been bringing against you? In such a way that 
you feel so bad about yourself. You don't think anything good can come out of your own life. The way you are looking at situation of life, you don't look at yourself as somebody that you feel expect any good thing to come from. You understand what I'm saying? But the power of the Lord and the anointing of the Lord is here today. And that anointing is able to reach you. And that anointing is able to touch you. And that anointing is going to turn the situation around for you. Jesus touched her. I believe Jesus is going to touch you today. As you begin to pray, the Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ, the anointing of the Lord Jesus Christ will come over you. And it's going to bring healing to you. But it's not only going to heal your body. Jesus woman, the Bible said, after Jesus has finished the ministration, look at what the Bible said in verse 17. And when he had said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed. And all the people rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. You understand what I'm saying? So, what God is going to do for you today, I don't know who I'm talking to, but the anointing of the Lord is pointing to somebody very particularly here today. That the anointing of the Lord is going to touch you, and what the devil has done that makes your life so miserable and you can't look up, you're always looking down. You don't look at yourself and feel, you know, walk tall. They said she was straightened up after the anointing touched her. She was straightened up. She was no more looking down. Immediately, that thing that is bending, the spirit has left, has a, a structure and a shape come back into the normal shape with which God has created her. So she can face life with confidence. She can face life without looking down. She can face life without stooping down. She can face life without being, you know, feel dejected, rejected among men. Among women. You understand what I'm saying? Jesus said, woman, thou art loosed. And the same word is coming to you, somebody here today. Woman, thou art loosed. Whatever the devil has used to bind you, woman, thou art loosed. The one that has no child and has been looking for a child for many years, woman, thou art loose. The one that they say, oh, you are of age, but there's no husband coming anywhere, woman, thou art loose. The one that is having sickness, disease, and infirmity, and it's a shameful disease, like an adult that is bedwetting. Oh, woman, thou art loose. The one that is having some sicknesses in the body in such a way that as long as those sicknesses remain there, there's no way you can give back to children. Maybe they are fibroid, maybe they are cancer, maybe they are whatever has affected your uterus. Today, I command those things to get out of your system in the name of Jesus. Because the Lord Jesus Christ is saying, woman, thou art loose. And I'm declaring you loose from every bandage of the devil in the name of Jesus. What is it that the enemy has put upon you? Has the enemy put a mark upon you that make everybody to be running away from you? You are not attracted to anybody and nobody is attracted to you. Not because you are not beautiful, but because the devil has changed your beauty to, he has removed the glory, he has brought some negative things upon your life. So everybody just see you run away. You know, it's like nobody feel, feel like coming to you. That's why you are growing old and nobody's you know, asking your hand out in marriage or something. That may be an attack of the devil. The Bible says, the, the whom Satan has bound, what is binding you from being fruitful? What is binding you from being coupled? What is binding you from being married? What is binding you from progressing in life? Today, you are loose from that bandage in the name of Jesus. Woman, thou art loose, said the Lord Jesus Christ. You are loose. You are loose from the bound. Whether it is Satan that bound you, whether it is some other success of Satan, Bezebub, whatever, Bezebub, you are, you are loose. Whether it is Asteroid, you are loose. Whether it is any familiar spirit, you are loose. Whether it is witchcraft, you are loose. In the name of Jesus, whatever spirit the devil is using to bind you and to bind you, I lose you from that today in the name of Jesus. Has anybody put an X on your soul that you can never make it in the family? I break that bondage over your life right now in the name of Jesus. The Lord Jesus Christ said, go there and heal the sick among them. And how is he going to heal the sick? You release the word that is going to release them from their bondages. I release the word that is going to release you from every bondage right now in the name of Jesus. May the healing virtue of the Lord Jesus Christ begin to flow unto you now. Let that healing virtue flow unto you now in the name of Jesus. Be healed from the top of your head to the sole of your feet in the name of Jesus. Everything the devil has used to hold you down, be loose from that bondage. In the name of Jesus. Where the devil tie you down, I loose you up. You are no more tied to that same spot in the name of Jesus. I don't know what they put upon your life and you cannot get out of your town. You can't even get out of your city. You have not traveled to any other state apart from your city for many years of your life. Something is holding you down. What is the devil using? I break that hold in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, woman, you are loose. And the Lord Jesus Christ is saying the same thing concerning you today. You are loose. 
in the name of Jesus. You are loose from the bondage. You are loose from the hex. You are loose from the attack. You are loose from the affliction. You are loose from every bondage the devil has put upon you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Just place your hand wherever there is any sickness upon you now. I want to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, everyone here in the sound of my voice, whatever sickness or disease is upon them, I release the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. I say be healed from the top of your head to the sole of your feet in the name of Jesus. And every spirit of bondage that is making you to remain in that sickness, I cut that spirit off from your life in the name of Jesus. I say get out, loose your hold. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Loose your hold on them. And let them go free now in the name of Jesus. I say now, 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 in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Praise God. Until tomorrow, be healthy, wealthy, and strong. God bless you.